and his, on his deathbed, his last words were, be strong and educate my children. Now what he meant, I believe, nobody really knows except for him what he actually meant, but what I take away from that is, of course we all have to be strong, we all know that we're required to be strong with all the, face, the things we have to face. But educate my children. I don't believe that it was just put them in the colonizer schools and make sure they graduate. I think it was that we need to teach our children their identities, where they come from, who their people are, what their culture is, what their languages are. If we don't know it, then we better get out there and learn it so that we can teach them. Maybe learn with our children. But we have to learn our languages, we have to learn our culture, we have to learn our ways and pass those along because we can't let them be stolen. We can't let them win. We have to be strong and we have to educate our children. And we are all tribal people here. And I'm not just talking about the, the black and brown people, I'm talking about everybody that's here. Somewhere along the line, among your ancestors, you came from a tribe. Find out who your tribe is. Find out who your people are. Because the closer you can get to your tribe, your people, your original culture, the more and better understanding you're going to have of the rest of us. Learn who you are. It's okay to be proud of your culture. It's okay to be proud to be Irish. It's okay to be proud to be from Czechoslovakia. I mean, it's okay to be proud as long as you don't use that you know, as justification to hate someone else. And I'm glad to see so many people here. And some may think that there aren't very many, but each one of us represents a family. Now you think about your family, think about who's at home waiting, who's at home, who's watching you. Think about all of those people in your life, all those people you influence. And then if you look around, try to imagine how many people are gonna be influenced by what we do here today. Think about how many people we're going to raise up because we have the mentality that we need to come together, that we have value, that other people have value, that each and every one of us matter, but people, when they cry out, all lives matter, they're actually dismissing the people that are being harmed. And that's not what the rest of us believe in. We believe we all matter, yeah, but some of us are hurting. Some of us are being attacked more than others. And those are the people we need to stand with. And as Native Americans, as Mexican Americans, no matter where we come from, whenever Black Lives Matter takes a stand, we all need to show up. Whenever Abolish Ice holds a rally, we all need to show up. And whenever Indigenous people have a rally, we all need to show up. What's going to happen if all of us start showing up for each other? We're probably going to get attacked because that is probably the biggest fear they have is that we unite. And that is exactly what we need to do. Unite. So keep showing up. Oops, thank you for those powerful words, Michelle, as always. Um, 
Next up, we're going to have Bear Alexander come and speak. Bear is a community activist from Omaha, co-organizer of Pro Black, All Power to the People, Disrupt the Corrupt, and uh, yeah, it's great to have you here, Bear. Thank you so much. What's good, y'all? How's everybody doing? All right, so uh, a little backstory. This speech that I was, uh, this speech that I had written was for the Black Rally, and uh, we moved it over to, so I can speak it on this uh, due to uh, circumstances. But what's crazy is the similarities that everything in this speech that I was pertaining to Black people pertains to people of color, and this is all affected by the people of color. So everything, everybody can relate to in this speech. Um, so first things first, my name is uh, Bear Alexander, uh, all power to the people. Second, I just want to recognize and appreciate the beautiful sign of solidarity which is happening right now. And also in such a time of great division, when we're bringing our cultures together, like we have to admire that. Uh, too many times we are we succumb to fighting against them, uh, against ourselves rather than using that truculent rage against the system that mercilessly oppresses us. It's about time that we show more unity in our community and it starts with us. How many of our brothers and sisters, uh, how many of our brothers and sisters are we gonna watch murdered in the streets before we take a stand? How many of our sisters are we going to watch being raped by a system, a system that is supposed to protect the woman but only protects the woman so long as she fits the, a certain shade criteria? How many of our fathers are we gonna watch being yanked from their families and put into prisons until we realize enough is enough? How many of our little black boys and little black girls, how many of our little black boys and little black girls are we going to allow to be systemically and institutionally oppressed by the system before we stand up and take a change? We are at such a pivotal moment in our we are at such a pivotal moment in our society. It's time for you to decide how how bad do you want to be free. And if you believe right now that you are free, then you already answered my question. Ain't none free about having to, ain't none free about having to rely on the government's assistance. Ain't none free about black and brown bodies being awaiting trial in, uh, in jail because they can't afford a bond. Ain't none free about having to pay taxes just like everyone else and attributing to this bullshit capitalistic system just like everyone else, but then still treated like we are inferior. What freedom? When Martin Luther King Jr. said, let freedom ring, and they allowed us to drink at the same water fountains as the white people, and sit in front of the bus with the white people, uh, and then go to the same schools as the white people, we looked at these crumbs as strides in our movement. We were bamboozled, we were bamboozled into thinking that these crumbs sufficed. And we let these crumbs pacify our resistance. We became quiet, and we became content, and we became pacified, we became, we started to suffer peacefully and that's exactly what we've been doing for the last 50 years. We are finally starting to arouse from the ashes that the system has been running in our community for so long and now is the time to wake up. We, all, uh, we also have an opportunity, brothers, we have an opportunity, brothers and sisters, to force change for our future generations. Now is definitely not the time to, uh, to limit ourselves on how we enact that forcible change. When we isolate ourselves to a singular strategy on how to dismantle white supremacy and the system that upholds it, we put ourselves at an extreme disadvantage. We then begin to strategize tactical effort, uh, we begin to strategize tactical efforts that inadvertently protect the system. Diversifying our tactics is essential in the decimation of the oppressor. We have been trained to stay and work within the confines of the system we are protesting unconsciously. The system will try and invoke fear within our minds with the consequences of breaking down those limits we have allowed the state to set for us and therefore not even recognizing our own power. The state wants you to believe that the only way that we can implement change is if we work within their system. But if this system was this that was literally made to oppress people of color, you can't possibly convince me that this is the system that I need to follow on how to protest. Damn, if I allow the system to work with me. Can you imagine the Jews asking the Nazis how to protest? How the 13 colonies asking the British how to protest? The Haitians asking the French how to protest? The slaves asking the slave masters how to protest? 
Also, one last thing. We cannot allow the critics of the movement to weaponize Martin Luther King's name to pacify our movement. Critics of the movement love to say, oh, MLK, uh, MLK would be so ashamed. Oh, MLK is rolling in his grave right now. We need to remind ourselves that Martin Luther King, being a prodigious factor in the civil rights movement, needs to bear some of the criticism that the civil rights movement is exactly why we are in the streets right now. It did not succeed. We are still fighting these fights still to this day. The civil rights movement did not succeed in what it wanted to accomplish. It put a call for institute, the end of institutional racial discrimination, disenfranchisement, racial segregation and equality. We all know damn well institutional racism is still happening right now. Gerrymandering and redlining is prominent as hell in America, and Omaha is one of the most segregated cities in the country. Ain't shit That's what you get when you work within the confines of the system. You think that you won, but really they stabbed you in the back and you don't even realize it until it's too late. Now is the time, brothers and sisters, to wake up and to unify. Power to the people, they are scared of, uh, they are scared of numbers. They are scared of unification. Right now we are divided and that's exactly what they want. Now we are finally, after 50 years, waking up and realizing that we have power. That if we don't rock with something, let's do something about it. Let's not just talk about it, let's be about it. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. All power to the people. appreciate that. You know, one of the most powerful things about what's happened in this country in the last few months since the death of uh, Mr. Floyd is to see these incredibly inspiring and powerful voices, you know, find themselves in this society and speak out. And, and to have so many people listening to these leaders. And uh, I'm just I'm so inspired, you know, when I see the, the marches that we have here in Lincoln and the people that have uh, helped out with those marches. Um, it's just, it's just been incredible to see, so I want to thank you so much for that. Uh, next up, we have uh, RJ Vega. Uh, he is a uh, owner of Ramu Media, Ramu Media, and he has a podcast. And uh, he's also part of the Abolish Ice movement, and he's an advocate for children. So thank you so much for joining us, RJ. All right, all right. How's everybody doing? Can you hear me okay? So let's uh, let's test your Spanish. When I say pueblo, you say unido. Pueblo. Pueblo. Unido. Pueblo. Unido. Pueblo means people. You're not unido means united. And there's many people here today, and I want to first. Unido. Uh, you know, in my culture, we're, we're raised to say, in order to get respect, you got to give respect. So I do want to take a moment to acknowledge all the uh, organizers, acknowledge all the uh, the Lakota and the Maka people here, uh, allowing us to to be here. And uh, everybody here today for taking the time, taking the time to make your presence felt in capacity. Okay? So, I want to be brief because these are, quite frankly, times of pain. Times of great pain, times of great stress. All of us are feeling that. When we wake up in the morning, when we walk down the street, when we see somebody wave the American flag, that causes us to tense up. Just who exactly is staring back at us? Those are our countrymen and women, our brothers, sisters, siblings, but we are divided. And that's not a, a news flash to anybody here today. So when I was approached to, uh, to speak about, to speak on today's event, a message of unity, a message of hope, I first wanted to take the approach of getting perfectly clear who it is we are up against. Who exactly is our enemy that we're combating? And no, it's not some standing army in some faraway lands. All of us here today, respective of our, our purposes, the reasons why we're here, you know, Black Lives Matter, Indigenous Lives Matter, missing and murdered Indigenous women and people, Abolish ICE, immigrants' rights, human rights. Those are all being vital, violated. But the enemy that we are all facing is the complacency of our brothers, sisters, siblings who are just fine with the status quo. They say, oh, you know, those Mexicans, why are they coming over here? Why are they taking our jobs? Why don't they just stay in their own country? You know, all oh, those black people, why are they out there in the streets causing the ruckus? Oh, those indigenous people, and, and 
This is one of my pet, one of my pet peeves. They say, oh, why, why don't you pull yourself up by your bootstraps? Here's the deal. The forces that we are coming together against, they don't have the superpower of generating great profits. They do not have the superpower of generating a massive economy. Okay, we can talk about workers, we can talk about the consumers, that's a whole separate conversation. The forces that are aligned against what a lot of us here are, are standing in unity for, their superpower is messaging, controlling the narrative, spinning the narrative, saying, oh, those Black Lives Matter people, they're causing a bunch of damage, they're activists, they're extremists. All oh, those Mexicans, you know, they're just coming here taking all our benefits. So the challenge for all of us here today, whether you're an elder in our community, you've got lived wisdom and experiences, whether you're a young person in our community and you're angry and you are right to be angry, the challenge for all of us here today is not to convince one another what we believe in is just. Our challenge is to change that narrative and those moderates that are out there who know that it's not right to be killing black people in the streets, who know that the Mexicans coming out here are hardworking and want to contribute to the economy, that they will open up their hearts and their minds, and instead of those of us here here today, we will double, triple, and have a group of people all the way down to the university. Okay, that's the challenge of our generation. And to be quite honest, I'm 35 years old, you know, my birthday and everything, I, I may not, I may, the reality is, and I've, I've had to come to terms with that, I may very well be an old man by the time we can reach the goals that we all are striving for. But that will not stop me, that is not a sign of despair. Okay, young people, when you're going out there and you're in the streets, when you're streaming these things, shout out to Paul them Creations out there. You know, when you're getting the message out there, you are changing minds. Seeing a young person stand up and say, no, this is wrong. You are changing minds. You are changing the minds of people in their 20s, their 30s, 40s, 50s, and older. So I just want to, take a, to leave you with a couple of these thoughts here. When people come at you with these venomous messages, you know, they might say, oh, you know, you Latinos, you Mexicans, why are you coming up to, to the United States? Your shield and your defense in all of this will be education, will be a network, will be able to combat those messages with messages of love, but also of knowledge. Because we, you know, it's easy to say, oh, these Latinos coming up north and, and why don't they just stay in, in their country as caravans? But we don't talk about United States foreign policy decisions that have toppled democratically elected governors, leadership. You know, we talk about Black Lives Matter and, oh, why are they out there in the streets? Why, why are they causing a ruckus? But we don't talk about a broken and unfair criminal justice system and the reforms needed. And for our, our indigenous brothers, sisters, siblings, you know, your journey is, is long and, and, and it's very much your own, so I give you much respect and honor to that because we are here today, you know, in, in, in your lands. But only together, and to echo everything that everybody else is saying, only in that solidarity, standing up for one another, changing the hearts and minds of those who are still on the fence saying, I don't know if I should be out there at the Capitol. Only when we can start to move that needle, day by day, year by year, will we enact the changes that we all want to see. Because let's be honest here for a second, it's not gonna be Joe Biden or Donald J. Trump who's gonna swoop down and save us. True change can only happen from the bottom on up, not from the top on down. So we need you all. We need you all, whether you're an older person or a younger person. Do what you gotta do. Listen to all these fantastic speakers, the healing and the power behind their voices. Get your mental health balanced, you know, seek out the resources. We need you, this is a long game. Get your physical health, your spiritual health, your financial health because this is a long game and we need you every single one of you who are here today we need you thank you very much
Thank you for those powerful words, RJ. I sure appreciate that. Uh, next, I want to, well, let me just start, I guess, first by saying that as Lakota people, we believe that sometimes the Creator calls us to do things. The Creator gives us a vision or a dream to do something, and, and it's incumbent upon us to fulfill that vision, uh, you know, at the risk of, of uh, angering the Creator. So. I want to, the next person I'm going to introduce is actually the man whose vision it was, whose dream it was, uh, to have this event today, and, uh, and I just want to thank him for doing everything in his power to fulfill that vision, uh, Mitch. Let's, let's hear from Mitch. I'm a doctor, dude. Um, I was going to speak earlier to start everything off to welcome everybody and just to share uh, you know, what we were doing here, you know, the unity and the solidarity and coming together. You know, we all do fight the same oppressor. Um, all the speakers, I want to say Wopula, because you really covered that and highlighted it. But I got too emotional. <laughs> see all these people coming in from all the directions. I got choked up, I couldn't talk. So I told Kevin to skip me, I wasn't gonna say nothing. But uh, felt obligated to come out here, you know, and, and say a few words, and just thank everybody. Um, thank my brother Chinuba for coming down with Louie, my brother Louie for coming down from Pine Ridge to help, you know, all the speakers. Uh, Pro Black, their energy is just, it's just overwhelming. And I really appreciate it. Dominique, she's been really instrumental, all the organizers. And, you know, this is just a start. This is just a kindling on the fire. Um, we're planning on bringing this to Omaha. Anyway, and we're going to planning on uh, one in California, Sacramento. I'm already working on it, one in, in Albuquerque. You know, this is just a kindling in the fire to bring our people together. So like one of the, you know, several people said, you know, enough is enough. You know, it's, it's tiresome that people of color have to suffer at the hands of this oppressive colonial mindset. And it's time for your people to wake up. It's time for us to come together and put, put down those labels they gave us, African-American, Mexican. We're not minorities. We're individual people, but we're also a collective of our people, of our tribes. But when we come together, we're a majority. And they fear this. I know they do. And none of the media is here. You know, we sent out media release after media release after media release. And there's two uh, reporters that contacted us. None of them came. They're, they're afraid to let people know that people of color are standing up and we're sick and tired. And we're sick and tired of killing our people, stealing our children, raping our women, you know. And I just want to say thank you. You know, we'll, we'll, uh, we haven't picked a date yet for the Omaha, but keep spreading the word. You know, the more we come together, the stronger we'll become. You know, we built a coalition here, and I'm really glad to see our island relatives here as well. We were, we were talking about that, you know, when we have Omaha, we like the guys to come out there too, you know, and, um, you know, the Asian community, we want to reach out to them as well, you know, just, it's time, it's time to stand together, it's time to let our voice be heard, you know, one mind, one heart. We all face the same oppression. We all face the same colonial mindset. And it's, it's, it's just time. And uh, I just want to say, Wopi La And I uh, appreciate everybody that's here. And uh, we got some more speakers coming up. I just want to share that with everybody. Uh -huh. Thank you, Mitch. And uh, thank you again for uh, fulfilling your vision here. So, uh, next up, I want to introduce uh, Maggie Jenkins. She's a community coalition founder and member of uh, DBED. Main, her main goal is communication and collaboration with different organizations. Uh, got one more. Uh, Hold on. Uh, yeah. There you go. As well. So thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, everybody. My name is Machine Miller Jenkins. My first name is so unique, um, and so is my middle name. I'm Machine Mashuri. And that means magic, my darling. My mother had my name picked out two years before I was born. And my grandfather's worker helped her hone that. 
It is the French version of Magic, My Darling. And people have come up here and talked about how everybody has something that they feel like they're drawn to. They feel like they have a purpose that they're trying to fulfill. And I feel like I was born in this time, in these moments, for this moment. For the converging of our people. And when I say our people, I mean the human race. Because just like has been spoken before, these labels that we have hit each other with are unnecessary. Black Americans, Mexican Americans, Indians, Native, all of these labels are meant to divide you. When we look at everything as one human race first, then we can start to build a nation and a foundation that shows us all that we all are worthy. We are all valuable. Because when they say all lives matter as a retort to Black Lives Matter, what they're really saying is they want all lives to matter. All lives matter to them. What we're saying is that all lives don't matter yet. If all lives matter, you would not have children in cages. If all lives matter, we wouldn't be out here protesting the fact that you are destroying our families. So my piece in all of this is communication because when I was a kid, I got punished with a dictionary. I know, odd, right? If I wanted to watch TV, I had to pick five words that were 10 letters or bigger, write the word and the definition during commercials, and my mother would check it. So she gifted me inside of her quote unquote punishment with the ability to look at language and try to make what I say the most palatable to all of my audience that is listening. So in the essence of that, I've been sitting on a little nugget of what we're trying to do here. I would like to put in a name into the hat for what we call ourselves going forward. We are the human rights evolution. Not a revolution, an evolution. Because a revolution says that there is somebody that you're fighting against. But if we're looking at all of us as being humans, we're not fighting against each other. We are fighting to evolve ourselves as a human species to a place where human dignity is always center stage. Food, clothing, and shelter are basic human needs. They're inarguably things that you need to survive in life. So why are those things not basic human rights? We have these antiquated systems that have been taught to us generationally that we have landlords that we have to pay taxes or tithes to some government that tells us, you're not quite enough. We're gonna take your money, but we're also gonna take your children. But we're gonna label it as ICE. We're gonna label it as CPS, because don't you know that we're doing this for your safety? Don't you understand that we're trying to protect you from those vagrants that will come in and destroy our way of life? When our constitution was written, it said, we the people, right? When I look around, I see we the people out here. But at the time that that was written, they said freedom for all, while they stood on mass graves of the Native Americans that they had slaughtered to steal their land. While they said justice and equality for all, they made sure that the pins were given to them by the slaves that they had there so that they could keep up their way of life. So what I am challenging everybody out here to do is to show up every time you can. I'm a mother of three, I can't show up for everything. But I will show up for everything that I am able because this is generational for me. My grandpa that named me, he was 104 when I was born and 108 when he died. He laid the bricks that you drive over on O Street, that big old star, my grandpa was a mason. His blood, sweat, and tears went into the building of this city. We were one of the original residents when Lincoln was built from Havelock. But yet, I'm still here, four generations down, fighting the same fight. He was a World War I veteran. He fought for this country. And I am still out here fighting this country for 
this country. Because it is our country. These are our streets. Everybody that is here is, you, if you were born here, great. If you weren't born here, great. Because no human being is illegal. All of these borders are fake. They're imaginary lines that people in power have decided to lay out to divide us. So this is not a Lincoln movement. This is not an Omaha movement. This is a human rights movement because we as humans have the right to do more than fight for survival. We have the right to thrive in the places that we feel the most safe. And it's sad that I feel the most safe inside of a city that does not value me. I am a black woman. I am the product of a system. At 13, I was put into the juvenile detention centers. I have been shot in my neck with authority, put into a straitjacket, and thrown into a room for 16 hours at 14 years old. I have been systemically drugged during my youth when most people were trying to figure out who should I date and what makeup should I put on. The system told me that I had oppositional defiance disorder. Obviously, I still have it. I had anti-authoritarian disorder. Uh, obviously, I still got that one going on too. So I got a list of things. I am an advocate of mental health and recognizing what's going on inside your mind because so many things that we are fighting are mental. They are a mentality of oppression. It is what you think about others and what you think about yourself that shows up in how you behave and act towards the communities that you live in. I think of myself as magical. My name means magic, and so I will spread my wand as far and wide as I can to bring forth as much change as I possibly can because human rights and human lives matter. So thank you all for showing up and showing out. And I can't wait to see everybody out there. Fridays and Saturdays are Omaha, hosted by Pro Black Liberation Square, 8 p.m. Sundays are Lincoln, right here, 8 p.m. So if anybody's wondering where we're going to be at, I'll just let you know. Show up. I recognize faces. I can't wait to see everybody.